Hi, this is Evan Hutchison with Foundation to Cloud, and today I wanted to go over accounting for a property that you own. So if you're actually doing the developing of, if you're buying the land and developing the property, rather than uh, building the property for another developer, how to account for the construction and progress in the books. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that when you are when you are building a property for somebody else, you are putting that on the P&L or you're putting that in direct cost, you're putting that in a WIP schedule on the balance sheet and so forth. Um, for a property that you're developing yourself, you need to do things a little differently. And uh, one thing I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I like to treat all the expenses, all the items um, as as expenses on the profit and loss statement. So you might put them into direct costs, direct materials, direct labor. Here I'm just kind of showing you a little bit more uh, in detail by just putting them all into the actual cost codes on the P&L. Um, so if you put them in the cost codes or if you put them in direct costs, they're all going to show up on the P&L. Let's just, this is just an example. I mean, I haven't really set up these books for this video, but I can make do. So if you look at job number six, one, two, three, Commerce Street, let's treat this like a job that ABC Construction Company owns. So they own the, they own the land, they're building the, um, they're building the the building on this land and we're able to see what the expenses are obviously there's no income because they're the income's all going to be reported once it's sold um, here's all the expenses but if and this will kind of if you're putting them on the p l this will give you an idea of you know obviously how much you've incurred an in expense but it's not really the correct way to do it because it's actually inventory it needs to go on your balance sheet so at the end of each month you'll need to make an adjusting entry to remove these from the P&L now if you have another software that's that's specifically for construction or development you won't have to go through this process because there's ways, you know, there's certain things you can do in other software. But QuickBooks is a little different. Uh, it's not specifically made for this situation. So I'm just kind of doing a workaround here. And, um, and like I said, there's different ways you can do it. I just wanted to show you everything on the uh, cost code side of things to give you an idea of what's being incurred. So you purchase 123 Commerce Street, you start building, uh, start building the building on it, and at the end of the month, you see that you're, you've spent $78,922 building. And since you own the property, it's actually inventory. You don't need to put it on, you don't need to keep it on the P&L. So what you can do is make a journal entry and create a dummy income account called capitalized expenses. So, so let's do that real quick. It might actually be in here already. Let me first remember this number. 78, hold on, 78, 17. So we'll go to a journal entry And at the end of the month, we'll just say it's the end of July of 2017. Okay, so here is the account. So that I created this dummy account already. Capitalize expenses and income. Call it whatever you'd like. Um, I'm creating a credit. So it is dummy income of 78922.17. So we'll just make sure to put that under this job, or it wasn't Illinois, was it? Oh, it was Commerce Street, okay. Commerce Street. And then you should have a construction in progress account, which I might have to create that too. Here's construction in progress. Uh, let me do this. 
chart of accounts new oops seven clubs new all right other current asset I'll do a sub account under that construction in progress and call it 123 Congress Street so you can track each one of your jobs you don't want to just lump it all under construction in progress and then we'll go back to the journal entry and construction in progress 123 Congress Street right here I'm going to do that too. Save and close. Now, if we go back to the PL, um, Commerce Street is showing zero income, which it should be because we did this dummy income account right here. And if we go to the balance sheet, we see. Well, I guess we need to change it to the end of the month. We see construction in progress, one, two, three, Commerce Street. You can you can shorten it right there if you want, but that's that's now showing us that we have that much inventory um, on the balance sheet because we own the property. It is inventory. We will sell it, so it's not actually an expense. We're we're going to report the expense when we sell the property. Then we're going to take it off the balance sheet, so we'll credit. Obviously, it'll be a lot more at the time of sale, but if we sold it as of now, we would credit the 78922.17 and debit the cost to get sold. And like I said, I, this company was not prepared for this video. I just threw this video out here. So there's a few other things you would see. One is land. You would see land on the balance sheet and then however much that would have cost. And then once you sell the property, you'll do the same thing with the land. You'll credit the land and then debit cost to get sold on the P&L. Another thing you would see, assuming you didn't pay cash for it, if you took out a, a note or a construction note or whatever it might be, you'll see that down here under liabilities. And that's another reason you want to move this construction in progress to the balance sheet. Because say you borrow, say you purchase the land for 100 grand, you put 30 down, you take a note out for 70. So you'll see 100 grand land, 70 down here in a note payable. And then you merge that land loan with a construction loan by taking out $500,000. So now you have $500,000 plus the 70, so you have 570 grand down here as a construction loan under note payable. And up here you have the land of a hundred but you don't have any construction in progress so your your equity certainly if you show a bank or whoever you know for yourself for a bank for a third party whatever your equity will be way off your equity down here will be um, a huge negative because you have that huge note down here without any expense that's been capitalized up here so let's just say for example, say we just for simplicity, we got the land for a dollar. We paid cash for it. The land shows a dollar up here. We don't see it, but just pretend like it's there. Land, one dollar. We paid cash, there's no note. And then we take out a construction loan of 80 grand. And so we see 80 down here. And we've spent 78,922 so far. So before we just put this entry up here, you would see an $80,000 liability and zero up here. So we'd be in the whole $80,000, even though we're really not. We've incurred those expenses to be capitalized. So we need to do this at least once a month uh, to get it back up on the books so we have an accurate balance sheet and an accurate P&L. Because say it's December 31st, you're not going to record those expenses until the property sells. So if you look at that profit and loss statement, you want Commerce Street to show zero because you're not going to put it on the tax return until it sells. So if you have Commerce Street showing negative 78,000, then there's going to be some, some huge adjustments to make um, on the tax return. So um, that's just a quick 
tutorial. Hope it made some sense, but uh, like always, feel free to get in touch if you do have questions. Thanks a lot.